Hello and welcome to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You're watching episode 5, Insertion Sort. So up till now, we've seen Selection Sort, Bubble Sort, and Cocktail Sort. All these three sorting algorithms are very intuitive. You really just keep going through a list, doing one thing at a time, and you will eventually sort the entire list. Today, we're going to look at insertion sort, a sorting algorithm that operates on a slightly different premise. You see, insertion sort only makes one pass through the list. By the time it reaches the end of the list, everything is nice and sorted. Now, this unfortunately does not mean this is an efficient algorithm. This is a spoiler, by the way. But yeah, we will get to that in due time. Let's now take a look at how the sorting algorithm itself actually works. So okay, let's start with our unsorted list. Similar to bubble sort, we're going to actually stick an arrow at the bottom of the list and this will allow us to keep track of our progress. Something unique to insertion sort is the fact that everything to the left of the arrow is actually sorted. Now, bear in mind that sorted does not mean that it is already in its correct position because that is not the case. Sorted simply means that they are already in ascending order. Of course, that's the order we want. If you want to do it in descending order, that works too. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we are of course going to put things in ascending order. Now, for insertion sort, we do not start at the first element. We start at the second. The idea is this. For every element pointed at by the arrow, I want to insert it into its correct position in the sorted list on the left. Now if you don't get me, that's alright, let us take a look at the trace. So we start at the second element, that is 7. Now 7 is technically sorted with respect to 2, and this means of course that we don't have to do anything. So we move on. So now we're looking at 6. 276 six isn't sorted. So what we do is that we swap towards the left. 6 and 7 exchange places, so now we get 267, and that's sorted. So we move on again, and now we encounter 2674. Now of course 4 isn't in its correct position with respect to the list on the left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap 4 backwards. Swapping 4 with 7, we get 2647 that is still not right. So we swap 4 and 6 as well. This puts 4 in position and so we get 2467. Once again we move on and now we're pointing at 1. If you kinda understand the pattern now, you'll realize of course that I'll need to swap 1 all the way to the left of the list. Now let's take a break here and review what we've done so far. As you can see, we are merely moving forwards in the list and with each new item we encounter, we're going to slot it into its appropriate position on the left of the list. This creates a sorted list on the left of the item with the arrow. This of course means that when the arrow makes a complete pass from left to right, we're going to have a fully sorted list. And that is in a nutshell how insertion sort works. Let's take a look at what comparisons are made. So we start off at the second item and we compare it to the first item. If the second item is actually smaller, a swap will need to be made. Now since there are no items further left of this swap, we can basically stop looking further and move the arrow forwards. And basically this is the same comparison that we are continuously doing. Whenever the arrow points to a new number, we're going to check it against the guy on its left. If its value is smaller, it's going to be swapped. Then after the swap, we're going to have to compare its value to its new neighbor on the left. And of course, we're going to have to repeat this in a loop until we encounter one of two conditions. First, if its neighbor on the left is smaller than it, we can stop altogether. Now, why do we not need to check anymore? You see, this sublist on the left is already sorted. If its neighbor on the left is smaller, you can be very sure that all subsequent neighbors are definitely going to be smaller. That means the moment you encounter a smaller neighbor on the left once, you are assured that basically that element is in its correct position. There is a second terminating condition, and we see it when we actually push one all the way to the left. If an item has been pushed all the way to the left of the list, then well, that is its position. At any point of time when you have a number that is smaller than all the numbers in the left sorted sublist, this is going to be the terminating condition for all the swaps. Once you swap it to the extreme left, it can't go any further, and therefore, the extreme left is its position. It may of course be displaced by another item that's coming in. 
And with this logic, we can actually complete sorting an entire list with insertion sort. So now all that remains is for us to complete the trace. And there you have it, that is basically insertion sort. Now let's take a look at the time. As mentioned earlier, it might look like insertion sort is really efficient because it just takes one pass through the list. Unfortunately, that is not the case because as it is inserting itself backwards into the sorted list, it is actually making constant comparisons to its neighbors and each one of those counts to the time as well. In this case, it is actually harder to see that there are actually n comparisons over n items but unfortunately, that is the case. The time complexity for insertion sort is still n squared. However, insertion sort, just like bubble sort, has a very good best case time complexity, and it comes quite naturally if you actually look at the way the algorithm itself is written. Because if we give insertion sort an already sorted list, every item the arrow points to is just gonna look at its left neighbor once and say, oh hey, I'm in position. The arrow is gonna move on, look at the item on its left and go, oh hey, I'm in position. And that's going to repeat for basically every item in the list, resulting in a grand total of just n comparisons. Conversely, if you want to give insertion sort an inversely sorted list, every element's going to have to take its time to slowly hop to the left of the list, and that will of course take n square time. The average case time complexity for insertion sort is also n square. And that basically wraps it up for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Read Ducks. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, I will of course appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But once again that wraps it up for this episode, you're watching 0612TV.